So imagine for a second that this is you. That you want to travel from Colorado all the way to a little place on the other side of the world called Uganda. Because you want to help a few kids and learn how to dance. <laughs> And then imagine that while you're there, you plan on rafting down the Nile River. So you, along with these people, have absolutely no idea what's lurking underneath the water. Looking at the stars. So what exactly is this horrific disease that the World Health Organization has estimated to claim over 200 million people's lives in 74 countries? Well, it's called schistosomiasis, and it dates back to 1900 BC. 300-year-old mummies were found to have had this disease. And in 1851, the first case was found by Theodore Blahars. So what exactly do snails have to do with this? Well, you'll see for yourself. So it's like this. People come into contact with a parasite during normal, everyday activities such as washing clothes, bathing, or swimming. Then, the parasite enters the body through the skin, and it takes about three days to reach the blood capillaries under the skin. And over the next seven days or so, the parasites migrate into the blood system, from the skin, to the lungs, to the heart, and eventually to the liver. Once in the liver, they mature into adult worms and form male and female pairs. This process takes about 45 days. The adult warm, pair, warm pairs then migrate to their final resting site. Of the two main types of blood fluke, which infect humans, one preferentially migrates to the veins surrounding the bladder. The average lifespan of an adult worm inside the human body is about five years. Throughout the period, a single female worm will release approximately 300 eggs per day into the bloodstream. The eggs released from the worms, located near the bladder, penetrate the bladder wall and are voided in urine. Eggs that are eliminated from the body have the potential to develop into mature blood flukes and continue the cycle of infection. Those eggs that reach suitable freshwater conditions hatch to release an intermediate life cycle stage. Mercidia, which actively search for a suitable snail host to infect. The mercidium enters the snail through the head or the foot and undergoes a process of manipulation and development in the digestive gland of the snail. This stage of the life cycle inside the snail host takes between four to six weeks. One snail can release up to 3,000 mature circuria per day. Each of these is capable of infecting a single person. 
The cercaria remain vi viable for up to 48 hours in fresh water. To continue the life cycle of infection, the cercaria must successfully penetrate human skin exposed in the water within this time, and the cycle continues. So the question is, how do you avoid this happening to you? One thing is, try to stay out of the water. But if you decide that you have to raft the Nile River while you're on your trip, make sure that you look out for signs and symptoms. A conscious choice to let yourself go Some other symptoms that may include abdominal pain, diarrhea, fatigue, enlargement of the spleen and liver, pain when urinating, blood in the urine, and overall general weakness. If you experience any of these while after swimming in any water in any condition in any foreign country, seek medical attention immediately. There are tests that your doctor can do to find out if you have developed schistosomiasis, and there's medicine offered like this one, Praziquantel. It is offered in three doses over a course of one day and spaced out between four to six hours. Side effects that may include headache, fever, stomach ache, diarrhea, and vomiting. You should not take Pazaquintal if you are already ill, if you're pregnant, or if you're a child, child with chronic illness like sickle cell anemia and children under one years old. Treatment should be repeated after one year. A vaccine has not yet been discovered. However, researchers believe that it will be founded in this lifetime. It is important to note that once you're infected, you may be infected again. Before you get on that plane, check with the Center for Disease Control or the World Health Organization to find out what's present in the location in which you're traveling. Also, make sure you're up to date with current immunizations and have all the precautions available to you. And if you really don't want to get schistosomiasis, stay out of the freaking water.